Bryant here for Directus. Welcome to the next lesson in our onboarding series. Today is all about managing your content. We'll give you all the tips and tricks on how to add your content, manage your layouts, and even some of the advice I've picked up using Directus over the last year or so. Let's hop right in. All right, so we're gonna jump right into our sample project and I will find all of my content within the content module on the left nav bar. So once I am in my content, I can quickly and easily search for different collections as needed. So blog posts or pages or my globals set up. Uh, so if I want to quickly and easily do that, just use the search collection setting there. And once I go into a particular collection, like the pages view, I am presented with what we call our layout. So Directus comes with five layouts built in. So those layout options you can control from the right information sidebar. I just select the layout that I would like. So calendar, cards, map, table, or Kanban view. And once you have a layout, there are also layout options. So you can see for the table layout here, I can adjust my spacing and at the top I can go in and adjust the width of each of the headers. I can hide certain fields or add fields as needed. Uh, I can also enable sorting uh, just by clicking the manual sort button and then dragging and dropping these to the order that I want. Uh, other layouts have more configurable options. So the Kanban layout. I have the ability to change how items are grouped, what's the card title that displays, what's the summary text, and I can even get more granular and add tags, a card date, a card image, and you know what users I want to show on the card. Do I want to show ungrouped cards? And one of the nice things about the Kanban view is the ability to drag and drop to change the status of a piece of content or uh, you know whatever particular list you want this to be in. Uh, the calendar view, I have various options like uh, template titles, uh, what is our start and end dates, when do uh, we start our calendar, and then the map view gives us uh, places on a map. Uh, very nice, very handy. Uh, I use it quite a bit for my own project uh, where I have a directory of sign shops that are across the US. All right, so I'm just gonna go into our pages, for example. All right, let's go back to our list of all blog posts. So one of the best features about Directus is the ability to search for content and filter content. So at the top, you have a search that will perform a full text search through any of the items within this specific collection. So if I search for case study or I search for rabbit, we could see what items come up. Now, that's very powerful, but when you need to get more granular, you can use the filters as well. So I can set up different filters where I wanted to see every post that is currently published that has a summary of rabbit, which is all the rabbits. What about here? Um, so I don't have any in that. Um, but I can go in and combine different filters. And once I have the filter that I like, one of the other really nice things, I say this all the time, like every feature in Directus is nice. Uh, don't get caught up on that. Uh, so I could go in and once I have this particular filter, I have my layout options set up, I could go in and bookmark this. So this is a new bookmark and that will save it and make it available for my team so they can quickly find the data that they're looking for. And if I go back to that, we could see that Directus has saved that filter for me and all of my different layout options. While we're here, let's just add a new example blog post. So we'll go to the top and create an item. We can select a status for this, choose what date it was published. And again, this data model is completely controlled by you. You've got the opportunity to change all of this, add necessary fields. So we'll say new blog post, give this a slug. And you can see as I type spaces here, we've got a slug interface that auto populates those hyphens for us. We'll go in and select a category for this particular blog post. 
a author or an, an author for this. Let's do hops along here. And anytime you notice that I have a relationship, so category is a separate collection, author is using the Directus users collection. Anytime I have a relationship, Directus will open up a drawer um, coming from the right so that uh, I can fill in that content. We'll have a summary section. We've got our content, WYSIWYG editor, uh, very friendly, easy to use. If you prefer Markdown, there's also an option for that. And then we have our SEO items. So our canonical URLs, any meta descriptions, titles, images for Twitter or uh, social media, all those things that are baked into this template. Now we'll go ahead and save this blog post. Uh, let's take a look at another feature that uh, is very helpful when building websites, our mini to any builder. Uh, this is an interface that has many different use cases, one of the primary ones being a page builder. So I'll set the stage for you. You've got a marketing team that doesn't know how to code. They need to create pages all on their own without in involving development so that we can go to market faster, we can make changes faster. Uh, they need to be able to build those pages, but... Uh, we don't want them to get hung up on the details of adjusting all the padding and spacing and like all the uh, WordPress based editors that you might have worked with in the past. This is a dynamic component where I could go in and add different blocks that we've set up that have a pre-configured schema. So we can have a hero section that has a headline, some content, we've got our buttons, we've got an image. Uh, we can have testimonials from our clients. So there's a, a headline and then there is a uh, nice section of content for each testimonial. We can upload logos. And again, all of this is configurable by you. Uh, and we can even reuse these blocks of content across different pages. So if I want to use the same hero or the same form that I've already used on another page, I can easily reuse that content here. Uh, and add another block to this uh, blocks field. Some of the other features within the content module that you should take advantage of are in our information sidebar on the right side. So we have first up our revisions. If you choose to enable revision tracking for a collection, Directus will keep track of all of those changes. So you can see here a couple weeks ago, we updated eight fields within this uh, particular item. And I can see all those detailed changes. I can see what the revision looked like at the time. And if I need to roll that back, I just click this revert option. And then I would go in and save those changes. The next piece of the puzzle here is our comments. So comments allow you to collaborate with your team right inside the data studio. I can go in and mention anybody on our team hops along please review this page. And of course, include any nice emojis that we want. Now, anytime I do that at mention, that will notify hops along based on his notification settings and shoot them an email or uh, an app notification, which will show up down here on the left. And last but not least is our share feature. So if I want to share a particular piece of content without giving login access to the data studio, I can go in and share this. So if we're working on a new blog post, for example, and I want to share this particular post, I can just fill out this information. This is a share for blah, blah. And we'll go in and you could set a password. You can choose a role to uh, control what information they have access to. I can even limit the number of uses for this link. Very handy if you're working with someone that you would not want to um, give access to your data studio with. And it's as simple as just clicking send link, entering their email, and they will receive that content via email and link back to the page within Directus. Of course, you can also just copy the link to share with them yourself. In addition to adding content manually through the Data Studio or using the APIs, 
you can also import content. So if I go back to our blog post collection, on the right hand side, I'll see the import and export options. Typically what I will do is just export the list of items. And that way I get a look at what my CSV should look like when properly set up. You'll want to make sure that if you are importing that your headers match the field names inside Directus exactly. Otherwise this will throw an error, but I could come in and quickly change this to in review and let's add these draft posts for in review. Bada bing, bada boom. We save it and then I come back and import. And once we upload, we'll take a look at the content. Uh, and it looks like I have done some duplication here by mistake. If you plan to update existing content, don't forget those IDs when importing. Now let's take a peek at the file library. This is where you'll manage all of your assets that are stored inside Directus. Uh, you can create multiple folders from the top right. You can see my collection of folders over here. I've gone through and uh, went a little crazy with these, but uh, organization is important. At least my wife tells me that. Uh, very easy to move assets around. You can see I've got all of these uh, are kind of out of order, which is driving me a little nuts to be honest. So I can bulk update these. I'll just select all these team thumbnails, use the move to folder, and those will go into our, do we have a section for our team? We don't even have a section for our team. Uh, what am I doing? Uh, yeah, so let's just create a new folder for those. We'll say new folder, we'll say team, and hit save. Okay, we've got our folder, we'll go back, select all those nice images, and move to that new folder that we created. Very easy. So now that we've satisfied one of my neuroses, let's jump into a couple of tips as you're working through the content side of Directus. Um, as a developer or technical team member, you are going to be responsible for teaching the non-technical team members how to use Directus. So here's some of the best advice I can give uh, based on everything that I've picked up with Directus over the years. All right, so number one, set up great global presets and defaults for your team. Um, when it comes to like the different layouts, different bookmarks that you set up, uh, make sure that you're hiding any content that they don't actually need to see, like metadata that you're using behind the scenes, and make the experience as user-friendly as possible. Number two, Loom videos or other video recording tools. ScreenFlow is what I'm using on these. I get asked that all the time. These types of videos are freaking amazing for teaching people how to add content and also for reference, if uh, a content manager leaves, you hire a new content manager, having that video can help them get up to speed with their CMS uh, very, very quickly. So, uh, and, and just also a word of advice, make sure you include the audio track in there as well. I get a lot of videos from developers who just show stuff on the screen and don't add the additional context. I wanna hear your voice. Make sure you add that to the video. Uh, number three, have patience. Uh, shouldn't have to tell you that, dealing with non-technical users. Uh, number four, make sure you elicit their feedback. Ask them how it's going with the headless CMS and make adjustments as needed to make it easier for them to edit their content. Directus is very well designed, very intuitive, but even the best design experience needs to be improved over time. So that's it. Those are my tips for you on editing and managing content inside Directus. We'll catch you on the next lesson. Thanks.